Hello everyone and welcome to episode 98 of ASA. Before I get into today's questions, I just want to give a huge massive thank you for the support in the last episode. For some reason, it reached over 500 views, which is just absolutely insane to me. That is now my most viewed episode of ASA. So thank you all very much. That's just, that's awesome to me. I really appreciate it. So now let's get into the questions, starting with Clone66 Studios. And he says, ASA, do you play Minecraft? I actually do play Minecraft. In fact, I've been playing a crap ton of Minecraft lately. I play Bedrock Edition, so, you know, limitations, but hey. So, I do play, and I've been having a ton of fun lately, and I'll actually do a quick world tour of my current survival world at the end of this video, so if you're interested in that, stick around to the end. Next question is from CT Bricks, and he says, ASA, do you think LEGO should make all UCS sets mini scale, or make them extra big like the Land Speeder and X-Wing, and then a bunch of potatoes thank you for the potatoes to be completely honest with you i've never really agreed with the whole minifigure scale thing i know that it would be nice to make the vehicles like actually accurate size to like what the character should be in some cases you would get really extra huge ugly vehicles and then sometimes it would be really small and weird looking and just not worth it as long as the set looks good that's all i care about and especially when it comes to ucs sets i would say no because ucs sets are designed to be extra big so so that way they can be just gorgeous on display. If they were minifig scale, like take the gunship for an example, it would have to be smaller like a playset. So I don't agree with minifig scale. I never have and I probably never will. <laughs> Your door. On top. On top of what? The giant. <laughs> Next question is also from CT Bricks, and he says, "ASA, can we ask multiple questions and then some more potatoes?" Thank you for the potatoes. Yes, you can ask multiple questions. In fact, I encourage it because then it allows me to answer more questions, thus making the video longer. So, if you have multiple questions, this goes for everybody. Go ahead and ask. But if you want to ask multiple questions, be my guest. <laughs> Next question is from Plorpes. ASA, how long can you hold your breath? Why do you need to know? To be completely honest with you, I'm not even sure. I'm gonna guess at least a minute because I'm like, I'm pretty sure everyone can at least do a minute. I'm not actually sure, but I'm not gonna try and find out. Let me try. <laughs> Breathe. Next question is from Ryan McGuire. I'm not sure if I said your name right, so I apologize if I butchered it. Anyways, he says, ASA, if you could pick any vehicle from the Clone Wars and turn it into a Lego playset, which one would it be? And then a bunch of potatoes. Thank you for the potatoes. So I might be reading this question wrong, but if you say, when you say Clone Wars, I don't know if you mean like the actual TV show or just like in general, like the Clone Wars era. So I'm going to just say the Clone Wars era because because that's kind of what I'm more thinking of. And so I'm gonna go with a blue MTT. I know other people have said that in the past, so it's not like, oh, I have this great new idea that no one's ever thought of. I'm sure many, many, many people have said that before, but I really do think that a blue MTT would just be awesome for two reasons. One, because we've never gotten a blue MTT, but also it's been quite a while since LEGO's last made one. The last one we got was in 2014, and the one before that was 2007. So like, like a blue one with a bunch of battle droids and all that stuff could just be so cool. I don't know if they'll ever do that, but you know, I would love to see that. Like a blue one. Heck, even another brown one would be cool from like Naboo. But like, I really want to see like a separatist version instead of the Trade Federation. That's it? Next question is from Mne. I'm still sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but he's never corrected me, so I have no idea how to pronounce it. At this point, I don't even think he cares. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. ASA, are you hyped for the new Ahsoka show? And do you plan to buy one of the sets? And then three potatoes. Thank you for the potatoes. I am hyped for the Ahsoka show. It looks like it's going to be very, very fun. I'm very excited. I wasn't excited at first. Like, when they first announced it, I was like, okay, 
I'll watch it, but okay. But now I'm actually like, yeah, it looks awesome. It's basically going to be Star Wars Rebels Season 5, but in live action, which is like super duper mega cool. I'm excited to see like what they're going to do with Thrawn and Ezra. Ahsoka looks really cool. Sabine looks super, well, super pretty. She's pretty, SpongeBob. But so like, I'm really excited for Star Wars Rebels. I mean, Ahsoka. And so, yeah. And then as of for the sets, yes, I'm excited for the sets. I'm going to get all of them. I already pre-ordered all the ones that are available for pre-order. Honestly, those are probably going to be some of the best sets this year, hands down. And our last question is from TG Collects, and he says, ASA, what are your thoughts on the new Ghost? It's freaking awesome. That's my thoughts. This thing looks absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to get it. I honestly think it's going to be my favorite set this year. It's just oh so beautiful. So, so gorgeous. The little phantom you get with it looks pretty cool. The minifigures look pretty cool. There's some cool looking little play features like it looks like you can lower the the ramp here there's some like cool blue pieces for the thrust you can probably rotate this gun at least up and down and then like there's some actually some decent looking interior which is quite cool and then of course there's some spring loaded shooters which is cool and then it looks like you can rotate this gun the only thing that i'm probably not excited for is if there's any stickers that looks like a sticker on the the phantom right there so i'm like that's kind of disappointing and that might be a sticker on the ghost right there hopefully not i hate stickers on windshields but if it is whatever so whatever all right so yeah i'm really excited about the ghost though all right, so I'm gonna show you guys my survival Minecraft world now. So bear in mind that this was pre-recorded, so I'm not actually talking while playing. Just wanna point that out. But so here's my little house on a mushroom island that I turned to grass. I got some bees over here, which is quite cool, just in the side of my house. Then over here, I got a little chicken for some eggs because eggs are fun. And then we also got a little sheep for some wool. I don't really plan to do much with wool, but hey. And then over here, I got some allays. Not sure what I'll do with them, but maybe someday I'll come up with a project for them. Then over here, I just got two sniffers, which are very cool. I'm a big fan of the snivers. I think they're a great mob. But yeah, so this was a mushroom island that I turned to grass, ripped out all the mushrooms, all that. So beautiful thing about mushroom islands are nothing spawns on them. So it's kind of like I'm playing in peaceful, even though I'm on hard right now. Here's my house. I got a little parrot right here and then a little kitchen. Over here, I just got a little chest with a few diamonds and some other minerals, nothing too special. Down here is my storage room. This is where I keep all my crap. I like to collect like pretty much everything I can get my hands on. Just put that away real quick. And then over here, we just got some more crap, so yeah. Inside the nether here, I just have like a little library. This is where I keep all my enchanted books. Very, very fun. So like you can see over here, this is where I keep my books in these barrels couple mending books here so very fun and then up here is my bulk storage room this is where I keep some more crap because I'm a bit of a hoarder I like to keep pretty much everything I can get my hands on I just I have a problem with that I don't like throwing stuff away I guess <laughs> in Minecraft over here is a super smelter this is where I can like cook a bunch of items really quick and then over here I just have more storage for some more well bulk storage I should say so yeah down here I got like a little hallway. This tunnel leads to a villager breeder. We've all seen villager breeders before, nothing too special. Come here, get some villagers, and then take them where you need to go, right? Then over here we got my guardian farm tunnel. So over here takes you to, you guessed it, a guardian farm. This guardian farm is super awesome. You just pull the lever here and then the things, the pistons start shooting off and then hitting the guardians with the tridents. The guardians spawn in those little chambers down there, which is just really convenient because it's like you know exactly where they're going to spawn on bedrock so you can just like do that this is a great farm for xp because then you can use it on your mending tools so you can heal them get them all the way back up to pristine durability which is just absolutely amazing so yeah really fun guardian farm very very cool very useful i recommend building that in your world then over here we got my industrial district tunnel so this takes you to my industrial district this is where i plan to build many 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 farms right now i only have a handful of farms but still pretty cool stupid rain it would have to rain right anyways over here this is my sugarcane farm i plan to rip it out eventually but right now i'm just gonna keep it until i get a better one then we got a iron golem farm slash villager breeder over here this is where i buy all my books like the mending books i showed earlier so this is pretty cool some iron golems dying here Unfortunately, cats fall in here and die too, which is kind of sad, but it gives me string, so 
there's a plus to that, you know, but you can see the iron golem, he's suffocating in the lava or burning, and then he dies, and then I get the iron, which is fantastic. Then over here we got just a little mob spawner, this is where the mob spawn. So this is built on a mushroom island too, but over there in those chunks the mob spawner is actually in a ocean. So mob spawn there, which is fantastic because then I can still get awesome loot from them, like gunpowder and all that stuff, but I can still play here and it's like I'm on peaceful, which is very nice. Then I got a bamboo farm over here, you pull the lever, push the button, and then it mows it down. Very fun, this is like a super satisfying farm. I absolutely love this thing. Flying machines are a pain in the butt to make on Bedrock Edition, so I'm really happy that I found a design that works. Like, if you've ever tried building a flying machine on Bedrock, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They are the most finicky and just stupid things to ever try to work with. But I found a design that works on YouTube, which is fantastic, and so there we go. And then down here, this is where all the bamboo gets stored. So as you can see, I got a little bit of bamboo, not a whole lot, but yeah. Then we got a kelp farm. That's really cool how the lightning striked right behind it. But this is a kelp farm. I literally just built this like two days ago as of when I'm recording this video. But this thing is pretty cool. Just collects the kelp and then it puts it in a smelter and then all that and so just collecting little kelp. I don't have a lot right now because I literally just built this farm, but very nice. So yeah, dry kelp is great. Stupid lightning. And then I got a pumpkin and melon tower. Those are just for pumpkin and melons. So, you know, nothing too special. I'm just going to sleep real quick here because this stupid rain and thunder is loud. And yeah, even though I have sound off, like you can't hear anything in the video when I was playing, it was like bam, bam, bam. So just just very annoying anyways I got an iron farm or the storage for the iron I don't have a lot of stuff here because I literally just like looted it all but you know so very cool lots of gunpowder though like that's amazing to see right <laughs> on bedrock edition gunpowder is like more rare than diamonds but yeah I got still lots of storage to put more stuff so that's where all the stuff goes it's kind of like the the main hub and then all the way over here this is my mine this is where I dug in the very beginning of this world just to get my hands on a lot of deep slate and diamonds and stuff so I might have a little bit of a digging problem I dug out the whole industrial district underground on layer 57 just to get a bunch of diamonds those fire pits over there are where the mobs can spawn so those are like hostile chunks but yeah then you can ride up this bubble column it's actually very fun it's kind of like a super fast elevator looks really cool big fan of bubble columns but so that's the industrial district. Still plan to build more farms, but right now that's all I got. So yeah, let's go check out the last farm. Last farm in this world is all the way down here at the end of my tunnel. I haven't decorated the tunnel yet for the farm, but it is a raid farm. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a raid farm, but raid farms are fantastic for getting enchanted books, totems of undying, and my personal favorite, emeralds. So down there is a pillager outpost, and every now and again, it takes a while sometimes, but you get a pillager captain that spawns, and then they get shot up the elevator here, and then you just kill them real quick, you know, I usually use my axe just so I don't get a bunch of crossbows with my looting sword, but then you get the bad omen effect, which is used to trigger the raid, because there's a villager up there in a bed, or on a bed I should say, that counts as a village. I'm not sure why, but it does. Just one villager and one bed is a village. So then the pillagers will spawn up here. And then all you got to do is, well, first you got to wait for them to spawn. I'm, I'm showing you here how they spawn. That lava is there to kill the ravengers just because they're a pain in the butt. But yeah, so they spawn in, then they fall down that little hole. And then you can kill them with your looting sword. I highly recommend using a looting sword. That way you can get more emeralds and stuff, but you could see some of the drops down there. They fell in, and then they get sorted down here, so you can see them coming in right now. So there we go. Very cool. That's a really good book, too. But, so that's my survival world. Let me know what you think. Hopefully it's kind of cool. I've done all this in hard on survival, so every now and again I make a creative copy of my world to do some testing, but I've still done all this in survival, technically. So I'm like, that's pretty cool. So what do you think? But anyways, that's going to do it for today's episode of ASA, so thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed, and ask a question or two for the next episode, and I'll pin my favorite to the top, which means you get to go first. But until next time, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!